for another episode of Real Fake Guns. Today we're going to take a look on the RPD. And a while ago I was in South Vietnam and I got the chance to shoot a real RPD from the war. And after I shot the real one, I just could not stop thinking about getting one myself. So I got the LCT RPD, and as you can see, I have already added real wood from the real RPD. It's Russian deep red wood. The RPD was developed in Russia during late World War II but was not released until after the war. The RPD was popular with both the Viet Cong and US Special Forces during the Vietnam War, but can also be seen during the Rhodesia War as well as more modern conflicts as in Iraq and so on. In this episode I was planning on showing you how to add the real wood on the LCT RPD and luckily my friend Jim also got one of the LCT RPDs so I'm going to show you how to add a real one on his gun. And here we have Jim's unmodified RPD. As you can see the wood is a bit more plain, a real Russian wood really does make a difference and of course some weathering always makes the character of the gun pop out more. So let's begin! And here's Jim's set of genuine Russian wood. It's nice to see it has a bright tone since I got the deep red tone. So you got two different kinds of RPDs even though they both have the real Russian wood. Yeah. I'm going to start with the buttstock. So the first thing we have to do with the LCT is to remove the lower. It has a screw here. There it is. And then I take the fire selector lever like so and I can push it out. And then you pull the cable from the stock and there it is. And now you have the lower loose. Uh, meantime, while I'm fixing the lower, Jim is going to remove this MOSFET, install these cables that uh, also is included with the box. And the reason I'm doing so is that these cables fit better with the real stock, because there is a lot of hard work just to get the MOSFET in the real stock. That is unnecessary, since in my opinion, this runs very good as well. Now I have removed this screw, so I can just pull the stock out and here's the real one. It does not fit straight away. As you can see I have to remove some material here and here. The old stock is 27 millimeters and the real stock is 29 millimeters. So we have to remove some materials from the sides in order to have it fit. And that seems about uh, right. Let's try if it fits. Yeah, that's a rock solid fit. Very good. And now we need to drill this hole so you can have it locked so it won't fall off. I'll start with a smaller drill. And we are through. Now I'm just going to change to a bigger drill that matches this hole. And we are through. And now I'm just gonna check and see if this screw fits. And it does. Now we're going to make sure that the cables can go through here and down here where the battery will be fit. I have some material to remove here inside. To get to the inside of the stock we need to remove this thing. It's connected here and here. And as you can see it has some really annoying screws that only goes in here and here. So I'm going to use this. I don't know what it's called. It's something my grandfather chopped up from an old plier. And I place it here. And when you got this far, you can use a screwdriver to do the last part. And now we have to do the same thing on this. 
there is a flat head screw just hold it in place and then just continue to unscrew it and here's where the cables will go and I'm going to cut it here so the cables can be pushed down here and in this compartment is where the battery goes it's a pretty big space for a battery for being a real wood stock Now I'm going to take some of the rough edges off on the metal so we won't cut the wires. So here's how it turned out. As always it's kind of rough on the places where you don't see it, it will be covered. But this is enough space to let the wires go through and down here to the battery. So Jim, now it's time to try if the modified stock works and put the cords through it. Alright, nice job. Through this hole here? Yes. Yep, through. Yeah, and it's through. And as you can see here, it will bend nicely inside of that. So that looks good. Now it's time to assemble the metal on the stock again with the cord in it. And then just screw it back together, just as we did when we took it off. And now the stock is assembled and this is complete. And it's time to move on to the pistol grips. And here's what they look like. The LCT have bigger grooves, the real one has smaller grooves. Other than that it's not that much a difference. And when I add the real grips onto the LCT, it fits up here, but not in the bottom. It's too big, as you can see. So what you need to do is to line this up even in the back and in the front. And when you have done that, you take a pen and you mark it up. And now you can see the material you have to remove. And then do the same process on this one. And now I will use a flat screwdriver and a small hammer and I will place it just outside the ring I have made with the pen and hammer it down and I will just keep hammering around the circle. part out. As you can see it pops out very easy. And now I have done the two grips and to test it with each other. And it's a nice good tight fit. It's even in the back and in the front but here we have a piece of extra material. I'm going to remove this and I will take the pencil and just draw a line like so and do the same on the other side. And that looks about right. And now let's do a test fit. And as you can see now it's a much more flush fit. It's more even. So now we're going to glue this part. As you can see it's turning black already. In the meantime we're going to punch these metal parts out and add them to the real grips because these help the grips get screwed together. Just turn them on the other side and add a punch or a screwdriver or anything and take it like so and punch it hard. And there you have it. Just do the same thing on the other grip. Then just take them and punch them down. Now let's add them on the gun. So a quick trick if you get new old stock grips like these are and you want to have a little more worn finish, just take them and rub them on the concrete. 
like so and you get a rough look pretty quick. You can do this as much or as little as you want depending on what the look you want to have for your gun. A little trick I often do to get them even more dirty is to use a black acrylic marker. I use the Molotov one for all marker. I just add dots on the freshly wounds of the wood and rub it out like so and you get a more matte warm look going. You don't want to keep the, the black just to get a little bit of like grayish fade. And as before, start very small, do it more over time. And now it's time to install the pistol grips. And there it is. And now it's time for the hand guards. So here's Jim's set of unmodified wood. If we compare them to the hand guards that uh, I have on my RPD, I have done some modifications in order to have it to fit. First of all, you need to remove this because as you can see, it has some extra material. It's not much, but it does add up and make it hard to fit. So what I did is I removed this and then cut these ears off and the reason I save these are when you look from it from this side it will be a gap here if you don't have these here so this is just for the looks and other than that I have also cut this part in more of a 90 degree kind of type since when it's unmodified it's curved and that makes it hard to fit on the LCT uh, also I will have to remove some material here as you can see this is thinner and this is thicker. So to start off I will start to get this angle to a 90 degree one. Now I've marked up the area. As you can see I have to cut it 90 degrees all the way up here. It's very important to take just a little at a time because as you can see it gets very very thin here. So you have to be careful so you don't crack it. Now when I am happy with this part, it's time to remove some material here. As you can see it needs to be thin like this, so it's some parts here to remove. And now I have marked it out, so I know how high I will have to cut it. And I think this is it. As you can see it's pretty thin here so you have to be careful but this looks like it should fit. And it should be uh, in the middle here otherwise it will be a too big gap so this looks uh, good. And now just do exactly the same process on the other one. So now it's assembled uh, and as you can see here it's a gap since it's missing the metal parts. So what we're going to do now is to cut the top off and also we're going to save this part which uh, will be placed here, it's this one. And then just take the rough edges off. And here is the bits. And as you can see I have cut them uh, pretty close in so that it matches where we cut the wood. So it won't interfere when we're installing it to the gun. And the first thing we're going to do with these are to take these and super glue them here so it looks correct. That looks good. Now the same with this one and then it's time to install it on the gun.
and here it is the handguard is ready and installed and I got a nice tight fit on the top and as you can see here you can see the metal part so it looks like it's all together underneath like the front one and also on the side here one thing that bothers me with the LCT RPD is that it is filled here the real RPD is open here when it's cocked and loaded so this needs to go uh, but the LCT have been kind enough to make this simple all you do is push these pins out push this forward and this will fall out this is just a plastic spacer so I think this is intended to be removed for those who want the extra added realism Hey, now får you bankmärken Yeah. And here it is. And now you have that open space, just like on the real one. Another cool feature to add to the gun is a ammo belt that you attach to the RPD. And here you see the link. I've cut it up in two parts. One without the bullets and a starter, and one side with the activated ammo. And in here, between, I have some steel wire. It's about 21 millimeters, and it will be enough to add onto the gun. And to add the ammo belt, you pretty much do like on the real one. You just open up the feed tray cover, and then you place the ammo belt so that the steel wires is placed in the middle. This part here. And deactivated ammo part here and you just close it and it will sit there nicely You again? Here it is. Now well, it is complete. Ooh, the preferred light machine gun of the enemy, the RPD. Now this is a gun. Oh, I love it. Ooh, excellent job, man. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, have you seen these guys? Love these guys. Pretty hard to understand, though.